Welcome back to our Let's Play of Vampire. Uh, we're finally going to uh, talk to Lady Ashbury about the uh, situation. Can't get to the uh, can't get to the people that I have the, the another body murdered thing on. So let's finally uh, discuss things with Lady Ashbury. I would ask you to avert your eyes, sir. Or did you not know it was rude to stare? I knew it. Speak up, Dr. Reed. I like a man who speaks his mind. You killed him. He trusted you. And you killed him. Spare me your sarcasm, Jonathan. You are but newly born in this world. We are vampires. We live by leeching the blood from weaker prey. We are Darwin's next chapter. His cynical and perhaps ultimate expression. The situation is somewhat awkward nonetheless. I have not been observed sustaining myself for many decades. I have to say, I'm a trifle embarrassed. Anyway, I have concluded my inquiries concerning your blackmailer. I see. Please excuse my agitated state. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't let anyone see me in this condition. I must confess I have not put an end to the blackmail, my lady. Unfortunately, I could not bring myself to do it. I'm so disappointed in you, Jonathan. I didn't expect this from you. Lady Ashbury, you yourself admitted how ridiculous the sum of money was. I can assure you it was all used for charitable ends. Well, you are full of surprises, aren't you, Jonathan? All right, say I trust you, but you will still pay the ransom. That is only fair. After all, it was you who failed to bring this problem to a satisfactory conclusion. I believe I could agree to that. And since a lady always keeps her promises, I will now answer any questions you may have. Yay. I don't understand. Why was I created and then left for dead? That is a question only the one who made you can answer. It's not normal practice. I doubt even if you find him, he will answer you, considering how cruelly he treated you. So me being a vampire could have been a mistake. I very much doubt it, Jonathan. Contrary to the legends, it is not as simple to make another vampire by just biting someone. I'd like to avoid creating another vampire by mistake anyway. Tell me, how is it done? <sighs> the process is dangerous. It could even kill your potential progeny. If you did decide to sire an offspring, they must drink of your blood, Jonathan. I've been hearing a voice talking in my head. Is this some kind of insanity? It feels like the voice of the vampire that created me. Hush. Tell no one this. It would be unwise to talk of such things amongst British immortals. Speak no more of your maker. How could this cause offense? Only the powerful immortals can mentally call to their progeny. No vampire or hunter will sleep easy knowing that an unidentified elder is stalking the streets of London. Excuse my forwardness, but... Are you my maker? Me? Goodness, no. Only a foolish immortal would create a progeny without taking precaution. And I'm no fool. Fair enough. A vampire? Is that what I am? What we are? Such a crude word, defined by penny dreadfuls and drunken hacks. No, you are now an Ekon, and that you shall remain. 
Are you an Ekon too? Yes, I am. We are the closest thing to what man refers to as vampires. Forget what you think you know about us. So we are Ekons. How can I identify us amongst other vampires? How to put it? All Ekon are vampires. But all vampires are not Ekon. We are a... But a branch of the immortal tree. Okay. <coughs> Why did you save me in the canning factory? I could hardly stand by and watch such a promising young blood as yourself be torn to shreds by some gutter scowl. William Bishop wasn't the vampire that created me then. No, Jonathan. Whatever their strength and demeanor, Skulls are the progeny of careless vampires. It cannot be the other way round. What type of vampire is a skull? Not a true vampire. The deformed offspring of lesser vampires. It is a shame these creatures run wild, slaves to their baser instincts. Why does Dr. Swansea allow you to feed on the patients of the hospital? Dr. Swansea is a good and compassionate man. He is trying to find a solution for our... hunger. Until that happens, he is clever enough to understand that I only feed upon the dying. What do you know about this Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole? The Brotherhood is well known amongst London Vampire Society. As long as our kind is discreet, and as long as they do not interfere, we have come to a mutual understanding. And no one suspected you of the murders. As you well know, suspicion has recently fallen on me of killing for pleasure. But you have my word, Jonathan. I take no pleasure in taking a life. I know this is beyond the pale, but may I inquire your age? <laughs> really? And I thought you were gentlemen. If you must know, I'm 27. I've been 27 for a long time now, and 27 I shall remain. Very well. But I believe there is more to this than you are saying. A lady has to have some secrets. <laughs> and who bestowed upon you this eternal youth? My maker. He left this isle a long time ago. When I awoke, changed, I was chased and attacked by vampire hunters, prepared and well-trained. Though I can't be certain, more than likely it was the once glorious guard of Prewin. Once glorious, but still dangerous. They have seen better days, but all fanatics are dangerous. You would be wise to stay clear. They are sworn to destroy our kind. You make them sound like some sort of cult. More a society. And like all the best ones, a secret society. I thought them almost gone. But it seems they have been recruiting. I've been away from London and England for three years. This isn't the city I remember. Things have gone from bad to worse here, Jonathan. I've lived in this city for a long time. And I've never seen it like this. The Spanish flu has hit London that bad. Yes, but it's not just that. I've heard things. Things I've not heard for a very, very long time. There are whispers in the shadows. Something far worse than the Spanish flu is here in the city. Oh? What is it you fear? <clears throat> fear has long since flown this form. But there is something malevolent circling us. I feel fear is merely waiting in the wings. Are there many vampires here in London? Immortals are of a rare breed, and we often tend to hide. But you may occasionally meet some of us at night. Do you know any of them? Have you an idea of the identity of the vampire who attacked me? You mean your maker? No, Jonathan, I have no clue. 
But I fear he or she is as careless as cruel. To let you discover your new condition by yourself. What do you mean? Every now and then, you may discover an immortal in the deep of the night. But we are a rare and reclusive breed. Our progeny is almost never accidental. Will they all be as affable as you, my lady? I do not see why not. But remember, even the shark smiles before he bites. That sounds like a lesson from experience. Vampire politics are as intricate and sometimes tedious as a game of chess in a gentleman's club. I've learned from experience it is best to decline to play. Okay. Looks like we're good. I bid you farewell. For now, my lady. I must quickly analyze the blood I took from Nurse Crane's patient. The Pembroke is so lucky to have Dr. Reed, you know. I Thank you. I met him in New York once. If only Another there night were more the of us, less of resignation and more determination. I know I can count on you. I wish I could say the same for the others. You look exhausted. You're pushing yourself too hard. You don't have to bear the burdens of this hospital alone. <laughs> okay. Let's head to my room and analyze that blood sample. I saw something shining over here. Anything in here I can nab? Yep. Oh no, this box has it's been locked. All right. It's locked. It's been locked. Probably have to kill somebody to open it. Uh. Oh, cool. Tame and opium. Let's go. Let's start administering these. Might take a while, but it's okay. First of all, do you have either of those Good things? Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. I'd like to see your wise choice. Okay, no, he doesn't. I'd really like a shotgun, but... Alright. Let's, uh... Oh yeah, the uh, other guy's a merchant, too. See? It's on the other side. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Please show me what. Of course. sell some stuff. Mm. 
I'm gonna keep my watch. Set back upstairs. Oops, sorry. I mean to disturb you guys. Let you down, my boy. Sorry. Find Oswald. You have a migraine. You have a migraine. So we have two migraines. But I don't know what she has. Oh yeah, that's right, I met her, but I sent her home. So we had two migraines and a headache. No, I definitely don't have enough for it. Some opium lying around. Alright, where are those two? More opium. Hello again, Mr. Thatcher. Do you feel any better now? Yes. This neighborhood may stink of dog shit and reek of piss. But to me, it smells like the purest mountain air. Mr. Thatcher, do you have a job? No. Since I came back from the war, I spent most of my time and energy just trying to forget. I understand what you mean. I was a soldier, too. No. Nobody can truly understand what I've gone through. Hmm? Why were you locked in that sewer? What happened? I went by the canal after an argument with a friend. Got chased by these fucking wankers and had to barricade myself in, despite my claustrophobia. Why did you run? What was the reason for your argument? Newton wanted me to go to a hospital. I can't stand being closed in. It makes me feel like I'm suffocating. Tell me about your claustrophobia. Has anyone given you an official diagnosis? <sighs> That's what the bloody doctors said. But I don't want to go to a hospital to get checked again. I'll deal with it my own way. Oh, eh? Oswald, why did you not go to the Pembroke Hospital to seek medical help? I don't trust doctors. <coughs> I don't care about with their careers and processes. I won't be locked in any room again by anyone. Your fear of being trapped is not going to go away by itself. You need professional help. I've seen enough butchers in white coats to last a lifetime. Hospitals reek of chemicals and death. What I need is fresh air. Do you want to talk about why you have this fear of being enclosed, Mr. Thatcher? No, I really don't. An irrational <laughs> fear like yours is usually rooted in a specific event. 
Perhaps it would help to talk about it. Well, Doctor, take a guess then, if you're so interested in my case. Uh... As a soldier, you're expected to kill the enemy to survive. Guilt is a powerful emotion and could lead to feelings of suffocation and oppression. My God, you're so wrong. Believe me, I would kill if it happened again. Violence is part of who I am. Damn. Do you need medical attention? Don't get me wrong, sir. I'm grateful for what you've done, but I've never felt comfortable with doctors. I'm certain you have your reasons. But let me assure you, I'm not like other doctors you may have consulted with. Uh, it is true. You risked your life to save me, after all. It would be impolite to refuse your counsel. Damn. I think I lost, like, two things Goodbye, for him. Try to take care of yourself. Hey, buddy. Hello again, Mr. Blight. I'm happy to see Mr. Thatcher is safe for now. I'm eternally grateful, Doctor. We were total strangers and you helped us anyway. Can't thank you enough, sir. You are always welcome at the Pembroke Hospital. As a former officer, I'll be honored to welcome a fellow veteran. I'm not giving up on bringing Oswald back to the hospital. I just need to convince him that he needs some help. Perhaps he needs to reach that decision by himself. Could you speak to him? He doesn't usually listen to doctors, but perhaps because you've been through it, you can talk him round. Why do you stay here now that Mr. Thatcher's back? It's complicated. Since the war, Oswald's been really nervous with the idea of entering any hospital. And me, I've got my own issues. Can you speak about them? Rats, sir. Even seeing one, they turn me. Just want to run. It's that fear that stopped me from going after Oswald when he left. What can you tell me about the war, Mr. Blight? If you want to speak about it, of course. War was... Well, you know, sir. The stench of death everywhere. Your mates lying bleeding in the mud. Just praying to make it through and get home. Bloody nightmare. Did you know Oswald <coughs> before the war? No. We met in the battlefield. I think we were in the same boat to France. We've stuck together ever since. I fought in France, too. I served as a field surgeon. But it was not uncommon to repel an assault, especially at night. Yeah. The first time I was wounded, I had to protect the infirmary from hostiles. Twice. What caused your phobia of rats, Newton? It happened last year following an artillery attack. I was trapped for two days in a hole under two dead soldiers. And there were rats. Go on. They started eating me as soon as I dozed. Gnawing at my ears. My fingers, lips, I couldn't move, I couldn't call for help. I see. No, you don't. You have no idea what it is to wake up buried under bodies. Fucking vermin eating your flesh. Oswald, he found me and saved me. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Blight. Take care of yourself. Uh, unfortunately, I screwed things up with Thatcher. I don't know what the right answer was. Obviously, it was the killing thing. I just thought since he, uh... hinted about the war, that's what it would be. Migraine and migraine. These people are... In Whitechapel. Okay. So let's go back to Whitechapel. Let's see if we can't help those people out.
Hopefully the streets are relatively clear. So what am I looking for? Looking for Mason Swansboro. And Benjamin Palmer. I remember Benjamin. I don't remember the other. Oops. Good evening, Benjamin. Can I help you? I'm afraid not, Mr. Reed. You don't seem well, Benjamin. Do you need any help? I always feel ill, sir. It's like I'm never right. I can try to help your body heal, sir. But you must stop destroying it. The war destroyed me, Doctor. A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cop. Alright. Let's see what you've got. Good evening. I'd like to see what... Just got more of this. Let's sell these rings. a lot of opium. Okay. I just need to find the other person. What was his name? This guy. Where is he? Let's find a uh, place to settle down. See what I can get from the uh, the pills and such that I got. Its effectiveness has been proven by many. Even the flu is no match for the Swanborough Pool. We'll go in here and uh, call it a day after I've seen if I can recycle any opium or that other thing from uh, the various items I have. glass files. Plenty of that. I'll recycle one of those and take the other one and sell it. Ah, oh, here we are. 
Okay. So I'm gonna go sell some stuff and uh, buy the rest of our drugs. Um, and try and figure out where her, I'm assuming, husband is. Maybe father, I don't know. He looked a bit older than her. But, either way, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a like. Share, comment, subscribe. It always helps me out. And as always, have a good day. Take care.